welcome back to Live and Breathe Horses and we're on to chapter 15 of this fantastic book from Nuno Oliveira From an Old Master Trainer to Young Trainers which is volume 2 in the Classical Principles of the Art of Training Horses. Today we're on chapter 15 which is about lateral flexions of the jaw. Now this was something when I worked for Miguel that we did a lot a lot of it. I mean, some horses don't need it. As we spoke about in the last chapter, some horses are more talkative, they say, you know, much more mobile in the jaw, and others are much more quiet. So that's a good thing to take into consideration. So let's see what the master has to say. The neck of a trained horse must be neither too rigid or too soft. Today, riders, when he feels a resistance on one side, has a tendency to push on this side and to bring the head to the inside leg by traction of that rein, convinced that he could, by this way, resolve the problem. Of course, the horse turns his head because of the strong pull on the rein, and for a short moment he appears to give. However, he begins to lean and resist again, almost at once, and continues to lean. This is a very bad way, a bad system, and if you do this, you will repeat and continue all the life of the horse. The work of the lateral flexion at halt and later forward is called to place the horse and flex the horse straight. And if it's made carefully by the action of the leg and the spur to bring the head laterally, more or less, depending on the case, this case or that case. It is for the trainer to observe in what degree each horse is best. That flexion, which you must obtain by a rein, takes a position, but not more tense than the rein of the opposite side. Lateral flexion must be asked after you have direct flexions with the jaw relaxed and never before. So that's why the previous chapter about relaxing the jaw obviously is a prerequisite to then asking for the lateral flexions. The horse arrives with his head at this point, the head not tilted but straight and not putting more weight on the inside or the outside shoulder. So this is very important to keep the horse upright. And of course you can see that from on top or from with the ear staying level. You know that he doesn't turn his head and tip. Well, if you're going to be tip that way. That, and that's the thing he's talking about, you know, with the rein staying equal. Um, okay, he must give the jaw more and after you drop the reins. This flexion at halt you ask lots of times and after you can also ask it in a straight line or in a pass around the shoulders in a circle and also around the hindquarters in the circle. Modern equitation does not use all these things because modern equitation is not based on the principle to ask lightness in permanence. But when you ask the lightness in permanence, you give the rider a chance to have the pleasure to ride a very pleasant horse, not contracted in his head or his body. While writing this chapter, I'm thinking about some old horses I have had in my life. Some horses who seem to be young horses. And I think especially of an Anglo-Arab of 20 years who is in my stable at present. So I think that's such a, a relevant point, you know, that it's only in lightness that um, you have that ease and flow. And it is something that has been a bit lost, but um, hopefully it's coming back, you know. And I know the Buck Brannaman, yeah, because <laughs> I'm also a big fan, and they might seem like two completely opposite things. But he actually also insists on lightness and for all the same reasons. So 
I hope there's something useful in that for you today and that you enjoyed it. Um, if you've got any questions, I'd be delighted to talk to you. Please um, just leave a comment below, send me a message. And yeah, keep tuning into the light and I look forward to seeing you next time.